Okay, so I guess like 70% of you saw the film. And uh, my talk is related to the movie that I made. You know, uh, it's a movie about happiness and uh, we travel around the world and, and uh, you know, uh, find out like who is uh, happy and, and uh, who is not happy. And uh, so maybe I'm gonna talk something a bit redundant for those of you who have already seen, but who have, those of you who have not seen, you know, I'll give you some, you know, uh, additional, uh, some information, you know, about the film. And uh, this is a movie uh, uh, titled Happy. And I'm a producer and I made the film with my best friend, uh, Rocco Bellic, who is the director of the film. And uh, we spent uh, six years um, traveling around the world uh, and, uh, you know, talking to the brightest mind in neuroscience, psychology, and also spirituality, and then uh, find out uh, some key elements of happiness. And based on that knowledge, we went uh, 16 countries and uh, visited uh, some remote parts of the world, such as uh, Kalahari Desert, and met the Bushmen, uh, single mothers uh, in Denmark, uh, slum dwellers in uh, Calcutta, you know, all walks of life, and then uh, see if these theories really work or not. And then as a result, uh, you know, uh, we made this uh, 76 minute uh, movie that you saw. And uh, while we are, you know, traveling and uh, sees, you know, uh, with the camera, sees uh, examining who's happy and who's not happy, you know, and then the exam, you know, uh, sometime like following them for a couple of weeks and uh, you know what makes them happy and all that and trying to figure out you know what formula really works and then uh, in the film yesterday uh, you saw and uh, probably you would agree but uh, um, what we found uh, one day we have this like a uh, aha moment oh some key elements work better than other uh, components and uh, we found that uh, uh, very happy people uh, are connected to oneself. You know, you recognize some of this, uh, the characters in the film. And they are also connected to others, you know, having very strong community or serving other people, you know, sensing strong bond with other people. And uh, to, they are uh, connected to life uh, circumstances. You know, could be just environment, or could be, um, you know, the, the 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 environment that they are living in, or a community. And uh, you know, you will agree that uh, these wonderful people are all connected to oneself, uh, environment, and uh, other people. <coughs> and. Uh, so through this like, uh, journey, we found that, uh, okay, these elements, connectedness to oneself, connected to, connectedness to uh, others, connectedness to the circumstances, are really good things to have. You know, uh, if you achieve that, you know, you'll be happy. And then, uh, interestingly, the same dialogue happened about 10 years ago between the, His Holiness the Dalai Lama and then uh, Paul Ekman who is a leading psychology uh, from, the, uh, from San Francisco. And he, um, he's an expert on uh, you know, human uh, emotions. Yeah, Paul Ekman. And this was a dialogue uh, uh, happened, uh, arranged for the book that they were uh, co-authoring. And uh, it's a dialogue between the psychologists, you know, asking the Dalai Lama you know, uh, about the subject of happiness. And uh, they both agree that, uh, you know, the Tibetan Buddhism, you know, uh, examining for millenniums about human emotion and human happiness. And uh, they came up with some profound knowledge and then uh, also technologies. Um, the Paul Ekman and then his uh, other uh, uh, scientists found the, the examining, you know, uh, all the happy, happiness method with uh, statistics and then survey. And both sides know quite a bit about happiness. But they all agree that uh, their knowledge and wisdom are stayed at, uh, inside the uh, uh, monastery 
and then their you know, knowledge stays inside the universities. So this precious, precious knowledge uh, kept inside the, the place where lay people like us have uh, no access to. Then they thought that, the, okay, they got the, you know, uh, start uh, collaborating and then uh, kind of like coming up with a method that uh, you know the people like us can adapt and learn. So um, I don't know how it's like in Europe, but uh, uh, th this is an event called uh, Happiness and Its Causes, and uh, it was uh, this one was held in uh, uh, Aust uh, Sydney, Australia, but this is happening in North America as well. Um, bunch of the neuroscientists, psychologists, you know, get together uh, with the, uh, you know, spiritual people, mostly uh, Tibetan Buddhists, and then uh, start having a dialogue. And this is uh, another talk with uh, His Holiness the Dalai Lama and, uh, you know, a bunch of uh, uh, neuroscientists. And then uh, something interesting happening. Now, you know, you can start seeing that the, the, the like, uh, you know, uh, Kirsten's uh, presentation, the convergence uh, between science and the spirituality is happening. Like a East, uh, no, West meets East kind of thing is happening. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, from this, um, uh, the initiative, some interesting um, collaboration also start happening, and in that which I attended. Um, this is, uh, um, you know, some event uh, in Phuket held uh, to, to program the, uh, you know, uh, the method, uh, to make people happy. And we have uh, educators and, and uh, neuroscientists and psychologists and uh, people like me uh, from media. And uh, we are putting you know, knowledge from uh, you know, science and then the contemplative science uh, such as uh, uh, Tibetan Buddhism. And the people like me come in and make this knowledge more enjoyable, you know, accessible, like I did with, uh, with the movie. And, uh, you know, the program is called uh, Cultivating Emotional Balance, CEB, and uh, I'm, um, I'm adding a little bit more uh, you know, elements from the Zen Buddhism, and uh, this is a presentation to uh, uh, the monks in Japan. And then the program becomes uh, quite accessible. I make, you know, some joke and slides and the videos, and, uh, you know, um, sharing the knowledge with the, uh, you know, the uh, students, at the schools and yoga teacher programs, uh, universities in Japan, and interestingly, uh, today's uh, topic, how we can bring inspiration and happiness in a corporate environment. And uh, this is one of the, uh, um, the clients that uh, uh, we, uh, we worked with. Uh, we did it to Google Japan, and uh, Daniela, as Daniela said, that the uh, happiness is a key element, uh, not just to make people, the employees happy, you know, uh, just giving them some like a cookies and, you know, make them satisfied. Actually, uh, happy employees um, are considered uh, more productive, you know, um, they have, uh, they are more creative and interestingly, they are more like risk taking. So happiness at the workplace really affect the, uh, the bottom line of a corporation. Okay, and then, uh, uh, so the program that I wanted to um, introduce to you at the workshop is, um, like I said, um, you know, in our film, some happy people are really connected to oneself. Um, secondly, uh, the people, happy people are connected to others. Thirdly, uh, you know, happy people are connected to circumstances. And uh, in the Buddhist terms, or positive psychology terms, uh, the number one is, uh, uh, is called the mindfulness. And then the second one is compassion. And then the third key word is gratitude. And uh, I chose these three topics to share. And uh, there are some program, and hopefully you will enjoy it, uh, will be introduced. And then uh, having said that, little introduction uh, to the uh, afternoon workshop. So the mindfulness. Uh, is, have you heard of the word before or do you actually know what it is? Okay, so for those of you who, you know, have never heard of it or don't know anything about, you know, just in the layman's term, I'm, I'll explain. 
um, I use this analysis. Uh, I call it P analysis. Okay. So let's say um, uh, the Sunny, you know, likes chocolate. Do you? Yeah. Good. Um, and uh, uh, my friend Pia, you know, likes red wine. Let's suppose, right? Yeah, red wine. <laughs> um, uh, let's say like, I like, well, I like woman, okay? Um, so, okay, so Sunny, uh, somebody wanted to make you happy, or you want to become happier, so you went to buy um, the, this famous department store and bought the most expensive chocolate, okay? You got a, the source of your happiness. And Pia, uh, you know, went to the liquor store and bought the, uh, like, 1968, you know, French blah, blah, blah wine, okay? And uh, I'm having a date with this beautiful girl, okay? We got this happiness moment, right? But imagine at that moment, if you have this situation, you know, like, a, oh, I got to go to the toilet. You know, you wanted to go pee. Can you enjoy this wine? Can you enjoy this chocolate? Or can I enjoy this, uh, this girl? No, right? Then we got, we got frustrated. Oh my God, I'm not enjoying this. And then uh, at this moment, many people, and especially my, you know, the, I, I do this talk in Japan and then the Japanese people, maybe some uh, Swiss people too. At this moment, they got so disappointed because they are not enjoying these golden opportunities. And they think that they should get even better chocolate or better quality wine or even more like sexier girl and trying to get that. But if you still wanting to go to the toilet and pee, you still cannot enjoy none of that. And at this very moment, what you have to do is very simple. Go to the toilet and pee. And then uh, if you, you know, and then you, you, know, you have this feeling, oh, you know, now I'm relaxed. <laughs> once, once you get to that point, even like a $10 bottle wine or uh, some, you know, mediocre chocolate or mediocre, <laughs> you know, girl, I can definitely, you know, we can all enjoy. So how can you attain that peace of mind? And that is the mindfulness that I want to introduce to you. Okay? Another, um, experience, uh, another explanation about uh, mindfulness. You know, the, when you are in, in a hurry, you know, maybe you wanted to go to the toilet or you wanted to, you know, uh, watch your favorite TV show, and then you are in a hurry and then you carry the keys and try to open the door, but I assure you, when, whenever you are in a hurry, you can't open the door. You know, once you get to that point, you have to kind of like, a, okay, calm down, you know. Put the, choose the right key, put it in slowly, and uh, open up slowly, and then door opens, you know. So all these like thoughts and then the, you know, the hurriedness, you know, is working against you. How can we attain this, you know, the peace of mind, uh, which may open other doors for you. And uh, yeah, another example. So you're kind of getting the idea of the mindfulness. And I just wanted to share this with you. Um, let's say um, that there's a very beautiful music, music A. You love it, OK? And there's a, another beautiful music, bu music B. Both of them are your favorite, right? So supposedly, 1 plus 1 equals 2, or even more, right? But uh, let's see. So I'm going to play the music that I like. OK, I think the sound comes on. Just enjoy a little bit. And then another favorite music of mine comes in.
See, um, I guess it wasn't that smooth, but uh, you know, I like both music. I like yodel too. But uh, if you listen both of them at the same time, you're not enjoying none of that. So if you, you know, you you kind of lose uh, you, you you lose the attention, then you don't get to enjoy any of that. And that is also mindfulness that I wanted to share with you. So uh, in my workshop, I wanted to um, kind of illustrate how to gain skills to attain peace of mind, you know, when you are upset, when you are sad, when you are jealous. But how can you attain this peace of mind on demand? When you choose to, you should be able to control your emotion uh, as opposed to emotions controlling you. So that is a skill that I wanted to develop with you later on. And uh, skill number two that I wanted to uh, share with you is compassion, okay? You know, in, a, in our film, you know, we talk a lot about compassion and so some, many of you agree that it's effective. Um, so now, I'd like to show you some images, okay? Pay very close attention to what happens in your body, in your mind, okay? So forget about, you know, where you are or what the other people are doing next to you. Just focus on these images and pay close attention to your senses, okay? Can you turn the light off or? Actually, that's okay. I think it's uh, bright enough. I mean, uh, dark enough, okay? So here's one image. Okay, here's another one. Something is happening, right? Like, a, I don't know. Maybe like something like soft, you know, uh, very cuddling. Okay, I'll show you once again, okay? Imagine that this uh, puppy is in front of you, you know, you know, just walking around. And then something happened in you, you know. Same thing. And here are my nephews. You know, I mean, you don't know them, but you know, you have uh, this like a feeling, warm feeling. You kind of wanted to smile with them. You wanted to embrace them. You may even wanted to protect them. You know, this feeling, even though you don't know them, something is start occurring in your body, right? Okay, here's another image, ladies. See, you don't even know Ryan Gosling, but you immediately felt something very positive, you know? I mean, <laughs> something is happening in you, undeniable, right? Okay, and then I'll show you another image. See, kind of, this is a homeless person uh, from the United States, you know? And you may think that, uh, you know, I mean, uh, your reaction, I saw your facial expressions. It wasn't like smiley. You got, what's going on? You know, because you may have thought that he's, uh, he's bitter, he's grumpy, you know, and maybe he's stinky. So you have this immediate reactions. So kind of opposite of this like a cuddly, warm, you know, roundish feeling that you felt for the puppy and the kitty, right? But Imagine that uh, because so the, uh, my nephews or the puppies or Ryan Gosling that you don't know, you are capable to feel love unconditionally because they don't give you anything back to you. You, know, you felt unconditionally uh, offered your warm feeling to them. And imagine that uh, if you can squeeze out some of the positive feeling to somebody whom you are not you know, feeling comfortable with, such as this homeless uh, gentleman, you know, then, you know, all these like doubt, je uh, your anger or hatred, or uh, in some cases like, um, you know, this, the, uh, this pie, uh, disguise uh, towards uh, this homeless people. But if you can squeeze a little bit of love and compassion, then suddenly you may feel, start feeling that this guy, this guy is okay, or you may feel you feel relaxed in his presence. So that is also happy skills that you wanted to develop. So that's another uh, 
uh, the piece of uh, workshop that I wanted to do uh, later on. And then uh, uh, I have uh, one video that I wanted to show you. This is kind of like an uh, experiment about uh, your attention skills, you know, how good your attentions are. So I'll show you a, a video, and then let's say you guys are playing basketball, okay? And uh, you are wearing white uniform, okay? The, as opposed to your enemy, uh, the, 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 the rival, the black team, black, black uh, uniform. So you are in a white team, and then uh, you have to pay close attention uh, to see how many passes are made among the white team, okay? All right, so pay close attention, and then the don't, you, I would advise that you kind of like a, like a count, you know, uh, like whispering and then counting, okay? And uh, it's very important uh, to check your attention skills, okay? So here goes the video. How many passes the white team uh, make? Actually, I should have told you not to laugh, but uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> did you notice something? Okay, the first of all, how many passes are made? 16. 16. 16, okay, that's good, that's the right answer. Did you see anything? Yes. Yes. Assume that you didn't hear laughing, but what happened? Gorilla, gorilla showed up. Anybody who haven't seen the gorilla? Oh, if I saw it. Okay, anyways. Uh, <laughs> if, you, if, you sit, like, if you sit alone and pay really close attention, you don't normally see the gorilla. We are special. Okay, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> What about the, any other things that you noticed? Yes. There were three people on the white team and two people on the black. Very, uh, like almost. Like a, there are three, three girls in the black team, but one girl left during the, uh, mm -hmm. during the game. Anything else? Uh, the background color changed? Yes. Uh, it was red and it turned into orange. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed that? Okay, well, I mean, okay, right. But what I wanted to say is that the, uh, um, uh, actually, what you see, what we see depends mainly on what we look for. Um, if you are driving like a red uh, Audi, you know, and you start driving and you pay attention to red Audi more often, you know, if you, uh, uh, because you know, it's the same color and the same model. So you tend to like, uh, um, pay attention to, uh, I mean, you tend to like, uh, see something that you are looking for. And uh, the third uh, workshop menu is gratitude. If you are able to find something around you that you feel uh, grateful for more easily, then your life is gonna be more colorful. So that is another skill that I wanted to develop with you, okay? So the, uh, as I said, that I wanted to train your eyes to see more beauty around you, okay? So with that said, I will uh, move on to my workshop after little preparation. So please uh, stay on and then enjoy, okay? Thank you.